what is up everyone? I am so excited to have you back for part two of this amazing video. But before we do, make sure to like this video, comment on this video, and if you have not already subscribed to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's right down there. And next to that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That notification bell will get you all of the notifications when we post a new video. And I hope you're watching this one because after this one, tonight at 7 p.m., there will be the finale video before the finale of Loki. I am so excited because I'm hoping that I'm right, but whether I am or not really doesn't matter. My main goal is to kind of just share my thoughts with you guys and talk about it in the comments. So you're watching part two of the Loki finale, not really live, but premiering from the Comics Lounge. Check out the intro. So I told you we're going to talk about them in order, I, or backwards order. So I talked about a couple different characters. I talked about he who remains at the beginning. Now we're talking about Loki. And now I'm going to tell you why I don't think it's going to be King Loki at the very end. So first of all, King Loki comes to us from Earth 14412. And King Loki has been around for centuries. And just in a, a different character is the best way to put King Loki. Because, as I said, he ends up taking on the moniker of All Butcher, uh, King Loki, uh, Laufey's son, Loki the End, Loki the Necro God, Old Loki, Old Trickster. He's this very powerful character. Now, we did see at toward the end of episode 5 that it could be another Loki. It would make sense if it's another Loki. But again, I'm going to tell you why I don't think it's him. So that way, when I say I don't think it's any of the three, my theory of why it is who it is will make a little bit more sense. All right. So, as always, we're talking about a different variant of Loki in the TVA um, realm. We're talking about a ton of different variants. We know that the Loki that we see is Loki 1130. 1,130 different versions of Loki from the beginning of time all the way up until present time, so to speak. That means that there's been 1,130 Lokis pruned or alive. We know that there's at least two that have not truly been pruned um, and that are going to make it back because you've got Sylvie, female Loki, and then Loki from the Sacred Timeline who goes off the Sacred Timeline when he steals the Tesseract. Now, here's why I don't think it's King Loki. King Loki is very powerful, very powerful. And if you look at everything that King Loki can do, there's a lot of stuff that I feel like would just be so over the top that it wouldn't make sense on how our Loki of Earth 616 can defeat even with the help of Sylvie. So here's just a few different um, powers that we've seen in the comics from King Loki. We've seen Mystical Blasts, where he can literally vaporize people like it's no one's business. He's vaporized uh, Sif and Hogan in the comics with this power. And we know that Gungor 
is the staff that Odin uses. So that's in the MCU already. That's a possibility of um, him being able to use that. But again, that's a very overpowered OP level um, thing that how would our Loki and Sylvie be able to match that as they go to the big castle at the end of time? He also can do illusion casting, which we know our Lokis can, or most Lokis can do. He can conjure stuff, so just like Loki can, like, make a blade out of thin air, or make fireworks out of his hand. Um, that's just another one. He's capable of levitation, teleportation. Here's the interesting one. He's also capable of time travel. He's able to freely move um, between different points in time. And he used that power at one point to actually travel to Earth 616. So, again, the ability to time travel, while it really fits into this, might be something that is just not something we're going to see. Um, then you have uh, transmorgification. I hope I'm pr pronouncing that correctly. But basically what it is, is he can transform objects into anything else. Um, such as when he alters like the staff's appearance um, and alters his own appearance. That's a version of that that we've seen our Loki do. So again, another power that Loki that we know and that we've seen used. We've seen it in this episode or in this uh, series where Loki dries himself off using magic. That's kind of a form of that. We've seen even um, Thor do it with Mjolnir when he transforms it into an umbrella. Uh, so the other thing that King Loki is capable of doing is shape-shifting, but on a whole different level. Not only is he able to kind of like change his physical form into pretty much anything he wants, but he's able to really mimic different animals as well. In the comics we saw him uh, transform into a magpie, a worm, and also a form that actually resembled resembled his original self. So is Tom Hiddleston going to play two different characters? I don't know. Um, not that he couldn't. He's a very well versed actor and I've said since the beginning of this he's had to kind of play 2012 Loki as well as this current changing Loki and to be able to put himself back in the mindset of where 2012 Loki was at when he stole the Tesseract and create all new um, and all, like a new persona out of that and not really fathom any of that change that the character has gone through from when he uh, did the illusion with the Dark Elves all the way to get help on Ragnarok and helping defeat Hela. So Tom Hiddleston is definitely capable of something like this, but again, to have such a overpowered um, master manipulator who is just able to manipulate others into doing what he wants, manipulate everything around him, and his most overpowered power uh, being able to just basically turn things to dust. That's just the reason why I don't think that it will be King Loki. I think that we're going to see some... I think that we could see someone else. However, being that we do have the trickster god, and being that he is a true trickster, a true manipulator, a true just all-around B.A. character... Um, there's a quote from the comics uh, that really kind of fits and that I could see in this iteration of Loki. So I'll read it. You think I'm the you think I'm the Loki that was? Dolt Simpleton. I am what will be. I am the destiny you run from, but will never escape because nobody else wants you to. I am king. I am your future. I am you. Which is something that we could totally see 
being played out onto this show where Loki kind of meets himself and sees that he actually accomp kind of accomplished what he set out to do at the beginning. But again, it just it doesn't seem to fit because you think that Ravona would know this. You think that um, you think that there would be a little bit more of a clue to King Loki being that person. Um, we've seen a lot of Lokis, and all of them are kind of they're great characters, but they're kind of simple. They're kind of in that realm of okay they fit but at the same time there's something about them that just doesn't match to what a uh, Loki is and we kind of see that Sylvie and Loki are the best of the best Lokis and that they realize what is wrong with them but also how to fix it and that's one of the coolest parts about all of this uh, one of the coolest parts about the series in of itself is that you get to see the transformation of two different versions of Loki. So with all that being said, those are the reasons why I'm truly thinking it's not King Loki. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. So with all that being said, those are the reasons why it could possibly not be King Loki. We'll see what ends up happening, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I would love to hear from you guys of what you think is going to end up happening in Episode 6. Make sure to stay tuned, because Part 3 of this series will talk about Kang, and then I will reveal who I think is the man behind the curtain of the TVA. Thanks for lounging with us. And loungers unite.